International finances on the precipice. The World Bank says the global economy is perilously close to falling into recession. War in Ukraine and the continuing effects of the pandemic mean it has significantly downgraded its expectations for this year. The global economy is projected to grow by just 1.7% in 2023, the slowest growth for over three decades. 2024 isn't looking much better. Francisca Onzorga from the World Bank told us that more developed nations are on course for a particularly bad year. By our forecast, the slowdowns in advanced economy growth are steeper than in emerging market and developing economy growth. In advanced economy, the, the, the policy tightening that's currently underway is sharply weighing on growth. It is much necessary, much needed, because inflation has turned out to be much higher for much longer than we had anticipated in even just six months ago. Six months ago, we expected, or consensus forecast, expected inflation in advanced economies in 2023 to be not that far off inflation targets of 2%. At this point, they expected inflation is expected to be around 5%, double that. So of course, central banks are tightening policy, have to tighten policy more than anticipated. And that is weighing on growth. Well, a major driver of the record inflation that we've seen in parts of the world, especially here in Europe, has been the soaring cost of energy, driven in part largely by the war in Ukraine. Well, let's speak to Livia Gallarati, who is a senior analyst at the London-based consultancy Energy Aspects. It's great to have you on the programme, Livia. Um, how far are the world's economic woes down to the energy situation worldwide? Well, let's look at how energy prices have evolved since the war has started. And if you look at most major energy commodities like oil and gas and coal, all prices for these commodities are actually lower now than they were when the war started. Um, so they are obviously they are high, but relatively speaking by historical terms. Uh, but if you look at them on an inflation um, adjusted metric, then they are actually looking relatively normal. Um, the, in a way, the global economy is suffering from other bigger problems, which we've mentioned inflation is probably the biggest one of them. And um, of course, energy prices are a part of that, but you have other factors as well influencing um, inflation. And for example, supply chain bottlenecks uh, created partly because China has been in lockdowns for much longer than the rest of the world. Uh, that is having a much bigger impact on inflation than energy is. Um, uh, you, mentioned how, is you mentioned how energy prices are, are in a, a better situation. In fact, here in Europe, gas prices are now below the level that they were at the very start of the uh, war in Ukraine. Does that mean that 2023 is going to see the energy situation worldwide improve because this World Bank prediction, this forecast is, is still very negative for the year. Unfortunately, we don't think that lower prices for gas and oil that we're seeing currently are there to last much longer. Um, one of the reasons why we've had lower prices uh, for the past few months is that China hasn't been in the market competing with Europe to, to source energy supplies. Um, that is about to change. China's uh, COVID policies are relaxing and it is starting to come back to the market, uh, both for gas purchases and oil. Uh, so that is bound to, to increase competition and increase uh, prices and it will have an impact uh, on the global economy. Oh, that's very interesting to think that the reopening of China is going to have that big an impact uh, here in Europe as well. Is the situation on energy markets exclusive to the more developed nations or is it, is it also having an impact on poorer nations? I would say that we can even narrow it down further and say that it's not just developed nations, but it's Europe specifically. Um, one of the reasons is because Europe is an energy importer. Um, so its industry is exposed much more than other places in the world to energy prices because it is effectively a, a price taker. Um, and if you compare it to other developed countries, like for example, the US, they produce a large uh, share of the energy they consume. So industry there benefits from energy prices that are a fraction of what we have here 
um, in Europe. And that is one of the reasons why you actually have currently some of the industrial giants of Europe that are looking to not just Asia, but the US to move some of their activities because of the um, less expensive right. energy costs. Yeah. OK, well, Livia Gallarati, it's been interesting to hear what you had to say. Thank you very much. That's Livia Gallarati from Energy Aspects.